He's the fountain of living water. Now in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. You, I don't know how to describe you. A giver up or too soon, if that's a word. Could that be a word, a giver up or too soon? I think I've just made a word. I know this about you. You're a giver up or too soon because so am I. You don't fight, you quit. I mean, it's just like it's just like the king cried out in the Old Testament saying, we're at the point of giving birth and yet there is no strength for the baby to be born. Look at this promise. He says, he says, from your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. He's not talking about some age to come after some age to come. He is talking about now. And so what should you do when you notice that there is no sense of living water flowing in and out of you? Do not be condemned. Do not drop your head. Do not run to the dark. Do not run away from God. Just say, at this moment, it is not the reality it should be in my life. I will run boldly to Christ with the biggest bucket I can find. And I will wait and wait and wait and wait. I will give him no peace until he fills me. You see, that's very hard for us, isn't it? We live in a day of microwaves and instant coffee and instant this and instant that. We have no sense of what it means to tarry and wait upon the promises of God, to grab a hold of the horns of the altar. Bless me to fight like Jacob. To fight like Jacob. I will not let you go. See, you can't grow. Well, I guess you could. But in most churches today, this type of language has no place at all. No one wants this. They just want, I did my thing on Sunday, leave me alone. Now I can go play. I've earned it. Brothers and sisters in Christ, don't, don't, don't ever give up. Take him at his word and wrestle with him. Be like a watchman on the walls of Jerusalem. God loves this kind of boldness. I will give you no peace until these things become growing realities in my life. Growing realities. But listen to me. Do this with joy. I've heard people say this. I've heard people say to me, you know, Brother Paul, the church began in the upper room agonizing that the spirit would fall upon them and the church will probably die in America or around the fellowship table stuffing itself. Well, the second part may be true, but the first part's not true. My dear friend, those apostles, the early disciples were not in the upper room agonizing in prayer. Why would they be agonizing? Jesus promised, didn't he? They weren't agonizing, trying to wrench something out of his hand as though he was a miserly sovereign who said, I'll only give you this if you afflict yourself. No, they were waiting in that upper room, waiting and waiting many days in one mind, waiting, but waiting joyfully. He had promised. Had he ever lied to them? And see what the devil will do, he will intervene in your life. And you'll, you'll hear a sermon like this and you'll get excited about wanting more from Christ and you'll go there for half an hour and nothing will happen and you'll just think it's impossible or something's obviously wrong with you. You'll become disgruntled. No, joyfully wait. And when all the horde of hell comes to you and says, you fool, why do you wait at his door? He promised. You fool, you're a beggar, why should he open the door? Because he died. I will wait. 
I will seek Him. I will go to His Word. I will be with Him in prayer. I will wait upon the Lord because He will not grant me less than what I ask for. He will only grant me greater than what I can even conceive in my mind. Now, when a lot of these TV preachers say that, they're talking about houses and cars. What do we care about houses and cars? Talking about the presence of Christ. Him using us. His pleasure. Do you see that? Oh, brothers and sisters, there's so much for you. So much. So much to those who will enter in, to those who will fight, to those who will tarry, to those who will study His Word and pray. One of the reasons why I respect what's being done here through the elders is they could give you a lot more things that they're not giving you to tantalize your flesh and to draw in a lot more people. They're seeking to give you Christ. And that's what you need. The question is, is that what you want? Christ.